One of the problems that I have in putting this address together every year is I want to talk about some of the things that we've done over the past year and choosing what to talk about becomes a real major task. There are so many things. This year, we had so many things happen. One of them, we had our music department, both our orchestra and our choir, work together to put on Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The entire thing. Seldom does a college take that on. Seldom do major orchestras take on the entire Ninth Symphony. It was a beautiful presentation of the Ninth Symphony. Greta Berghammer in the Department of Theater put together To Touch the Moon, a play that celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first landing on the moon, but was an interactive theater production, especially for kids on the autism spectrum. I had a chance to go and attend one of the three phases spread out over a week's time. And the interaction with those students and to see what they were doing was incredible and really opened up new vistas for not only those students, but people like me that had the opportunity to see what was going on. There's just so many things that happen on this campus, from things in the classroom to things on our theater to things in athletics. We celebrated 50 years of women athletics. We've had women in athletics on this campus before Title IX, not after. Something kind of unique for university campuses to initiate women's sports in it dance of Title IX. Celebrating that, our volleyball team came through and won the Missouri, the Missouri Valley Conference Championship regular season and the tournament and went on to play in the NCAA tournament. Just great, yeah, thank you. But I've picked a few out that are unique stories, especially our student stories, of the grit that our students have, of their resourcefulness, and the way they build networks around themselves to, to meet the challenges that they face. So I want you to meet a few of our students. First young woman up here on the left is Kyla Ford. Kyla was this year's graduation speaker, commencement speaker for the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Kayla is originally from Lisbon, Iowa. When she was 17, she graduated from high school and promptly moved out of her first house. It wasn't going well. She had just been diagnosed with regional chronic pain syndrome. She started at Kirkwood Community College. In those classes, especially the psychology classes, she was starting to connect, and she realized that many of the problems that she was facing weren't unique to her, but the mental health issues that her family suffered from and that she occasionally found herself dealing with were actually solvable, and people could help, and she could help her family, her community, and herself. When she completed her program at Kirkwood, she transferred to the University of Northern Iowa and entered our social work program and was just a rock star. But she also got connected with various student organizations from Active Minds to our social work associates, student associates, very engaged in UNI's chapter of the NAACP got herself very engaged across campus, and that support network helped her continue to grow. Then in her junior, between her junior and senior year, she became a part of the Ronald McNair program, a program that supports young science students wishing to go on and earn doctoral degrees in the sciences. So this fall, she's enrolled at the University of Illinois Chicago in their community psychology program, working to earn a PhD and go on and help in communities and in small organizations, develop healthy minds and healthy mindsets and address issues of mental health. Kyla was a remarkable speaker and has been a remarkable student, giving to student organizations, to her classmates, and making this a great place for students to live and to learn. Dominique Jefferson is a person whose smile will light up the room or the entire Campanile yard. You see Dominique coming, he's probably pushing a wheelchair. And his head is down, he'll take a few strokes and he'll look up and this smile will hit you from the other side of campus and it will brighten your day. And his black horn rim glasses will set just above that smile. And then you start to talk to him. If there's any student that had a reason not to finish their degree, it's probably Dominic. Dominic came here from Gary, Indiana, was involved in athletics in his sophomore year Uh, He was trying to bring to campus a national fraternity that supports young black men, Omega Sci-Fi. 
During one of the programs with Omega Sci-Fi, he all of a sudden developed a severe backache and had trouble even taking a step. He crawled to a couch and laid down. Turned out that he had a large hemorrhage in his spine. Don't really know what caused it. He found himself paralyzed from the neck down, and he spent two months in the hospital. When he finally got out and started to work with physical therapy, they weren't sure that they were certain he would never walk again and probably have limited use of his hands. He got into a wheelchair and continued to walk. And this year, this spring in May, he crossed the stage walking as he received not only his diploma, but was awarded a Lux Award from the university. That's the definition of grit. Dominique could have easily have given up, but he was driven not only to get his education, but to make sure that Omega Psi Phi had a firm foundation on this campus. So after setting out for two years, he came back to the university went to work on Omega Sci-Fi, went to work with the UNI Black Student Union, also helped with the Mockridge Ministry Council and board, completed his degree in management and marketing um, here, and then graduated and was awarded the Lux Award as one of our top leadership and civic engagement leaders on our campus. So congratulations to Dominic on and what he's been able to accomplish here at the University of Northern Iowa. But it was friends that wrapped themselves around him at Omega Sci-Fi that he credits to this and his family, being able to keep this commitment going. Joseph Tibbs is a physics major. He's a senior this year. He's the one person here that hasn't graduated. Joseph Tibbs is from a small farming community about 50 miles west of, west of here called Alden. Joseph is a double major in physics and biochemistry, and he's already worked doing research projects. He's a remarkable student in the classroom. But he's done research projects in physics and biochemistry here on this campus, but also with a professor at the University of Iowa at Yale University. He spent a summer, a summer ago, at uh, the Living Materials Lab at Yale University. And this summer, he worked with the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST, doing research as well. A year ago, he was named an honorable mention for the Goldwater Scholar, as a Goldwater Scholar. About 200 people are named Goldwater Scholars and another 200 Goldwater Honorable Mentions out of over 1,200 people. He was the fifth person to receive Honorable Mention Goldwater Honors at this university in the last 12 years. This year he received the scholarship. He won the, Goldwater, the prestigious Goldwater Scholarship. Very few people, especially at institutions like you and I that don't have a focus first and foremost on research, are able to earn not win, but earn the Goldwater Scholarship. He is our third Goldwater Scholarship winner in the last 12 years. So congratulations to all three of these students on their determination, their hard work, their grit, their resourcefulness, their ability to surround themselves with people in their lives to make a difference. In Kyla's case, it was students in the student organization. In Dominic's case, it was his family and friends from Omega Sci-Fi. In Joseph's case, it was faculty members in the Department of Physics, Department of Biochemistry, and places at the University of Iowa and Yale University that have made a difference in his life. So each of them are having remarkable careers because of their grit, their resourcefulness, and their ability to surround themselves with people that can make a difference in their lives. Thank you. We have two international ambassadors that I want to tell you about. One of them I have no doubt that you've heard about, and that's Drew Foster. He is our first national champion in wrestling since the year 2000, so it took 19 years for us to get a national champion. As amazing as that is, and universities would celebrate that, and we would be, but the really cool part of Drew is how he handled himself after winning that national title. Cheryl and I watched the entire tournament. Um, and as each person won their match, they'd come over and immediately an announcer would put a microphone in their face and start asking them questions. Drew was the only one that pushed that microphone away and went and hugged his mom and dad. And before he got back there, he hugged the five other UNI wrestlers that were there for the, competing in the national tournament. And the first thing he talked about is how much those other wrestlers meant to him because they were the ones that helped him train to get to this point. 
Later in the interview, they asked him if he was going to be pro become professional and then wrestle and try to get into the Olympics. And he said, well, first, I'm going to student teach. You see, Drew's a, a secondary ed major, and he ultimately wants to become a principal or a superintendent. And I hope no kid messes with him. <laughs> <laughs> but his focus, even while still winded and trying to drink Gatorade and replenish himself, when asked, is he going to be a pro, he was thinking about his career after wrestling and getting his student teaching in. But by student teaching, it also meant he could continue to wrestle with those five guys and the others that are part of you and I's wrestling program. So uh, Drew is just a remarkable ambassador for us and showed it on national TV. Jesse Himes is a remarkable story, and I'm, I wish more press were covering her story. She is now a junior uh, biology major, and she's from just down the road in Swisher. When she was born, she had a deformed lower leg, and her family made the really hard decision when she was really still quite young to amputate that leg. And Jesse thinks it's the best thing that ever happened to her because it let her put on a prosthetic and actually learn to walk and to run. Jesse is an, what they call an F64 para-athlete, which means she's missing at least part of one of her limbs, lower limbs. She is the world record holder in the discus. If we had any other world record holder on our campus or in the state of Iowa, you would hear about it daily. She set the world record in a meet, reset it in that meet, set it again two weeks later, and then reset it this summer in an international track event in Grosseto, Italy. And we've heard a little bit about it, but not anything like world record holders should. She's currently not on campus because she's competing right now in the Para Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. She'll be back in about a week. So if she's in one of your classes, give her a little stack. She's kind of <laughs> representing us in a pretty big way, right? She's already qualified for the Paralympics in Tokyo. Not only is she the current world record holder in the discus, she currently holds the fastest time in the 100 meters for F64 female athlete. Um, and so she competes in sprints, 100, 200, and 400 meter, as well as throwing the discus. Both of these are great young people to get to know. If you get a chance to meet them sometime, take that chance. If you've had them in class, I think most of you know what I'm talking about. We've had some great successes, too, in a, in a few other areas. Rose Cedar Valley is our local Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Authority. It's a combined group. It represents all of the Cedar Valley, including the cities of Cedar Falls and Waterloo and Hudson and Waverly few others, kind of think of all of Black Hawk County and a little bit more. This year, you and I was named the Economic Inclusion Partnership Award. This is given by a committee on economic inclusion, a, a subcommittee of uh, Grow Cedar Valley that is really focused on helping businesses and industries in the area understand the business proposition, the profit proposition of diversity and inclusion in their workforce. We were awarded this, this award for one, recognizing that we have challenges, putting it forefront in our strategic plan, working diligently to create a diversity strategic plan, and working to increase our numbers of employees who are people of color and from diverse backgrounds on our campus. A lot of the work that has gone on and Preparation of the documents for this were done by Gwen Berry, so thank you, Gwen, for your work on, on this uh, award, but on our work on diversity. But diversity isn't something that can be carried, and inclusion, diversity and inclusion isn't work that can be carried by a single person. We all need to be engaged. This award was really given to us because as a campus, we have made a commitment to all be engaged in improving our diversity in understanding that the more diverse we are as, as a workforce, the better we can serve our students, the better education we can deliver, the better we can serve the Cedar Valley and really our entire state and nation. So it, kudos to us, a lot of hard work that still needs to be done. The UNIQ, the UNI Center for Urban Education, also received the Heritage Legacy Award this year. The Heritage Legacy Award is given by a, a group um, in Des Moines called I'll Build Me a Better World in Iowa. 
And it's a group of diverse people who are committed to recognizing and calling out African American cultural, culture, arts, and contributions in education and awareness and partnership throughout the state of Iowa. They recognized UNIQ because it serves more than 17,000 people a year through four different programs. Most of them aimed at getting students typically not represented well in higher education into higher education, not just at UNI, but across our state. From the Center for Educational Opportunity, from Equal for the um, Upward Bound Program for Student Support Services. They are working with people throughout the region to give them an opportunity to see that education is something they can get here in the valley or across this state. Great recognition for the work that Robert Smith and his colleagues at UNIQ have been doing for a long time now. Great to see that recognition for their work, which is our work as well. These two awards together say a lot about our commitment. Now we've got to make sure that it turns into achievements and actual change at our campus. So congratulations to Robert and colleagues. The university also received two other awards this summer that I wanted to point out. I'll start with the one that is on the, the right over here. Um, the um, organization bestcolleges.com recognized our online secondary math education program as one of the best in the country. In fact, they ranked at number 15 um, amongst the best colleges. This is an award that really singles them out for their ability to connect with students, to bring in high quality students, and then to provide the support services that they're going to need to be successful in meeting their degree requirements and moving into the field. This is especially important because in this state, we have a problem with STEM education, and a lot of that stems from not having appropriate math background. So anything we can do to improve the math education across the state is something that our governor is focused on, the legislature is focused on, and we're one of the people that's helping solve that. Many of the people engaged in this program don't have access to higher education with where they live. That it's online gives them an opportunity to engage in this work and get the degrees they need, the certifications they need, be high school and junior high math teachers. We also just received word um, earlier this month that we were named an Excellence in Assessment Award winner from the American Association of Colleges and Universities. There were seven institutions named to this award this year. There have only been 27 institutions ever awarded this distinction. It's given for our work in academic assessment quality control on our academic programs. The work that we have done to put in place learning outcomes and to assess those learning outcomes in a format that is really the standard, the gold standard in our country. That's a standard that's put together by the National Institute for Learning Outcomes Assessment. It's a framework that they created. They work closely with AAC and U. They're recognizing us really for the work that we've all done to put in place in each of our programs active learning assessments and then to collect the data. They were particularly impressed with what's going on in the political science department and the physics department to show real gains in student learning. I want to thank Dee Dee Heistad for her work in organizing the paperwork and also really driving our assessment work here on campus. So Dee Dee, thank you for your work in, in assessment and helping us grow all of our undergraduate programs quality here at the University of Northern Iowa. Thank you. As I said, we have much to celebrate, much to be thankful for, many great things going on across our university from outstanding students, outstanding programs, outstanding faculty and staff. And I could literally spend an hour up here talking about those. But we have some things that we need to think about for our future. We now set seven years from our 150th anniversary. In six years, we will welcome our 150th freshman class. That seems strange to even say or to think about. But standing in a building that is now 119 years old, I guess that makes sense. Um, one of the, so as we think about that, what we're actively trying to do, and I've got to quit hitting buttons before I'm ready. 